All right, so in today's video, we're gonna be upgrading my 2018 Fat Bob with a full new cam test. So I'm pretty excited today. Finally got a lot of the packages I've been waiting for to do my cam install. What we got going on back here, got some push rod covers. This is the oil, this is the cam plate and oil pump. And I got some other various things. And for any of you guys that are looking to get into this, maybe you guys don't know what to choose or maybe you guys are kind of like between some of the choices. So maybe I can go over some, uh, the ones that I picked and why I picked them. So one of the first things we got going in is the SNS 475G cam. So basically this is gonna be, this is the thing I'm really excited for. It is a really, really nice cam. It's got a good amount of power. The G in the 475G means gear drive. So you're going to be getting rid of that chain drive and adding gears in there to really tighten up that timing and probably just a little bit of extra longevity so you're no longer worrying about a tensioner on that chain. It's just... So outside of upgrading the cam, there's a couple other things I really wanted to get into this while I'm in the cam chest. So while you're in there, there's a couple things that are just an easy upgrade and you might as well do while you're in there. So we got right here, the package is a new billet cam plate and oil pump from SNS. So one of the reasons why I wanted to upgrade these is because of the issues that people have had on some of the M8 engines. There's been, there's been some something issues on some of the Touring. There hasn't really been reports of that on the soft tails, but better safe than sorry. Plus with all the features that are added in with this extra pump, it's kind of hard not to want to throw it in there. So some of the big things that come with this oil pump and cam plate is that you're gonna have an adjustable pressure relief so you can adjust your pressure to the way you like it and you can do it without even taking off the cam plate. It actually sticks right around the cam plate so you don't have to remove everything in that cam chest if you wanna get back in there, which is a huge plus. The other thing is that billet cam plate, it's upgraded in many ways. You got brass bushings in there that your crank and your cam are gonna ride on. That's gonna give you a lot more longevity. And then your oil pump, there is three different gear rotors in there that are gonna separately be able to drive all the different oil feeds for your engine. You give it the proper flow that it needs to all the different areas. And another huge thing that is really important to me specifically about the SMS oil pump that I didn't see in any of the other aftermarket ones is that it's also rebuildable. So now that I've gone and kind of explained why I'm putting these components in there, hope you guys stay tuned to watch me install these. All right, so, to get the exhaust off on these new soft tails, since we got this radiator right here in the way, this oil radiator right here, the oil cooler, you're gonna want a swivel, a swivel half inch socket. It makes it way easier. So instead of having to take this off, because normally you'd have to take this off to be able to get your socket into here to get this back bolt that's back in there. But if you get this guy in there, you can really just dig it right, right up under there and get it on the bolt. That's gonna save you a lot of time and a lot of unneeded unneeded effort. All right, so I accidentally forgot to record on the camera, but I cut my push rod tubes with some bolt cutters. When you take off the clips on there and you pull it up, you got this guy right here. This is a little paper clip with a little rubber band on your head stud up there. And you're just gonna basically clip it on there to hold it up and do that on all of them. And then just take your bolt cutters right here and cut them. And the result is something like this right here. All right, so luckily the pump comes pre-assembled, so you can just slide it in there as it is assembled. Also in the instructions, it does show how to do it if it was unassembled, so it will explain that if you want to do them all 
assembled differently. So now we gotta line all these rotors up. So you know it's kind of a pain. So I'd say that's kind of a pain. If you had a buddy helping you, you could have him spinning that back tire so that you can have this kind of just slowly rotating until it finally slips in there because these little rotors are not all lined up, so that's what makes it hard to do. Alright, so now we got our two gear drives right here. You got two little dots, one right there and one right there on this, that you're gonna wanna line up and put it on there. And for it to go on there, you got a keyway up here, you can face that up, and the flash spot right there will be also facing up. And that's how you know that they're gonna be lined up. I'm gonna make sure right here it says out for M8. I don't know if you guys can see that. But on one side it says out for M8, on the other side it says out for TC, which is twin cam. You have a little oil port right here that is used to shoot the oil into your tensioner to keep tension on the chain. Since that's no longer there, you're going to want to block that off right here so you don't have oil shooting out of that. So this bottom bolt is a half inch, at least that's what comes with my kit. Yours may be different and we're gonna tighten this to 24 foot-pounds. Now your cam is gonna be 35 foot-pounds. Now remember, your blue thread locker. Probably will have enough in your kit. I ended up running out myself. So the tightening sequence on this is again a star pattern. It's gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. And that's what you're gonna torque to at about 120 inch pounds, not foot pounds. All right, so when we're finding top dead center, I'm gonna be using these old push rods. So basically that's just these half cut push rods. I'm gonna put them in here and basically we're just gonna use that as reference so we can watch each one go up and down and you'll wait till they're both completely down on the cam is where you wanna find them. So then you're, you know that the is at the lowest point, that's your top dead center. So you just wanna rotate the wheel. You'll see it come up, go down, the other one come up and go down and they'll both be down, and that's where you want it to be. All 
Alright, so they're feeling like they're both all the way down right now. So, now I'm gonna go ahead and take these guys out. SMS Quickie Adjustable Push Rods. Basically, these ones are nice because you don't have to take them, you don't have to take off the head or anything to get them in there. Basically, just thread this thing all the way in until the threads are no longer engaging and you slide this all the way in. We also have this, these are push rod tubes, and these are just basically so that you can get these things a little bit higher up there. Actually, it's gonna go like this, a little bit higher up there. They're shorter than your standard ones, which are gonna go a little bit farther down and make it a lot harder to use. So these ones are just gonna help out with really being able to get in here to this lock and jam nut and tighten it down. The way that you get these guys, you're gonna get a kit from Harley. If you're getting it from Harley, you might get it from s and And basically, it's gonna come with this, this little piece right here, and also your little keeper right here. On the old one, on your silver ones, you're gonna have these guys come out, and there's a spring in here on the silver old one. So you're gonna take that, it's gonna come with this washer right here, one washer and an o-ring. So you're gonna get this one from your old, from your old piece, and you're gonna go ahead and slide it in like so. Go ahead and put the washer over on top of this guy, and then you can put your o-ring in there. There you go. Gotta make sure you have that washer. That washer is to pr protect your o-ring from the spring so it doesn't get in there and tear it up and then you end up having an oil leak. And then from there, go ahead and slide this guy on. This little edge right here goes on there. And there you go, now you got it. Now you'll have your push rod. You'll slide it in here like this so you can put it up in there. But first you're gonna wanna take out your o-rings, your old ones, and replace them with some new ones. So just make sure to take note, these bottom ones are brown. They're the brown ones. They seem to be a little bit thinner. Now make sure to be careful with these guys. When they're in there, you don't want to end up nicking them with your push rod tube. When you're tightening down your push rod tube, you want to slide nice and good in there. There's a chance that you'll get a leak if you don't be careful with them. And you'll want to do the trick that I mentioned earlier. Some paper clips. Just connect it right onto there. Hold these guys up. Alright. So I get it just so that it's touching the lifter. I want it basically so that it's loose in there, right? It's loose. Like it doesn't feel tight. You can still spin it, but you can't move it up and down. You can kind of jiggle it a little side to side, but that's okay. From this point, you need to make sure to look at your specific push rod instructions because each one is gonna have, well, they might not all have different ones, but they can vary on the thread depth. So it's gonna depend how many times you're gonna to wanna to turn this until it's at the point where you wanna wait for your lifters to bleed down. And yeah, just for an example of the differences between your push rod adjustments is on the s, &S it says that you wanna do 24 flats, which there's six flats, basically you're counting the flats of this nut right here or this one right here, I guess. There's six flats per turn, so that equals four turns. For your Screaming Eagle Har Harley push rods, it's only two and a half turns. So there's a big difference in, in that. So if you're like me and you got the s and &S, what you're going to want to do is go ahead, hold your bottom one, and turn it four turns, which is the equivalent of 24 flats. And now that we got that all the way there, we're gonna go ahead and tighten this guy down so it doesn't move somehow. Now, now that we got it in there, we wanna wait 20-ish minutes or more, it's gonna depend, until you can feel this thing spin freely in there. That's what we're feeling for. We wanna be able to spin it with your fingers. See right now, if you feel it, it's really tight.
All right, so the bike is all done. Can't ride it because handlebars aren't attached, but I can start it. So we're gonna go ahead and start it and see how this ends up. Only for a little bit because the garage is closed. 